am script. Now, see, we are going little deep, okay? From form, you're publishing everything, and then you have this am script. Now, this am script, where it will set, will be in the head. So, I'm putting this here in the head, okay? This is my am script code. Here, the design doesn't look good, okay? To explain, what I'll do is, this, this was my am script. So, yeah, it will be this way, okay? So with this function attribute value and using member ID, this will give you basically the, uh, uh, I have to understand which, this is a Spanish keyboard. Uh, now I understand, uh, and to my experience that I have understood which button I have to press. So this will be the MID. So this will give you the MID and all these request parameters, when you submit a button, okay, when you click on submit, you have a, where is this page? Hmm. When you click on submit, okay, you are loading the same page. Here, what I'm doing, again, I'm going back. Stop me if you uh, don't follow me, okay? This one, action. This is the page where I'm redirecting when somebody is submitting. I'm redirecting to the same page, consent collection page. And when I'm submitting this page, it is coming to the same page and it's assigning the values. Hmm. Here, first it's assigning the MID, then whatever somebody has inputted in that input field here, I'm just giving small example. This is for capturing the email, okay? And here the full name, address one, address two, CT, zip code. Here I said this one would be, just a minute, what I had added was this one. Hmm. So this is the SMS, first is the email, okay? So here, this one will be email consent and this is the email consent okay so i can copy paste this one and say sms and whatsapp simply i'm following a very uh, strict nomenclature so i don't mess out with my code okay so this sms consent sms consent okay and this is the whatsapp consent it will require a little practice for me to deal with this keyboard. Okay. So everything that I want to capture, I'm capturing it. Huh. And once this is everything is good, it looks good to me. Give a proper comments and everyone, right? I always prefer having a proper comment to understand what I'm doing. I'm not going into details with comments and sections, right? Once this is done, I'm going to this form, right? And I'm going to add it here in the head. Now is the next step towards my design okay and then what i do hmm? here i have captured everything okay now i have to push it into my data extension hmm? so here let's go back i'm going to first paste it here okay this will be inside the Closing tag of this AMP script is inside here. Okay. Now, once I captured everything, okay. So my first validation is whether this is not empty, right? So when this form is loaded, okay. When this form is loaded, hmm, these are all are empty fields. Okay. So if by somebody is getting redirected here, this will be all empty, right? So everything here is captured. So at the first form load, I'm not going to try to insert. So that's why I'm making a if condition saying that if that field is empty, let's skip this part. Okay. So if this is okay, then forget about this. I don't want to confuse you. So where is my star? This will be like simple load. Okay. Nothing will be done. Simple load. I'm not inserting anything. So on the first load, everything is good, right? This will be shown to the user. Okay. This will be to the subscribers. They will come here. They will add the form, add every details here. Okay. Add the email, first name, last name, everything. Once they submit, okay, the page is loaded and everything is assigned. Right? Where am I? Ah, this is one. Everything is assigned. And once everything is assigned, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to insert into my data extension. Okay. So through this code, what will happen is it will offset into that master. I said this is a master D. I'll instead of consider this as master D, I'll say this as a master subscriber. And then 
I'll add this code. Okay, I have one primary key. Okay, see here where is my data extension? Yeah, huh. so I have kept email address as the primary key, right? That's why uh, to define the filter, I'm saying one. Hmm. Let's go back here and say this is the one. Hmm. And here, this is defining where I need to offset. Hmm. I can use insert data, but I will use offset data so that it can be updated as well. So your offset data, okay. Uh, if somebody here, if you want to use this in the email, I don't prefer the email, I'm going to cloud page, but if you have to use uh, to update the data extension in email, you have to use offset D. Okay. Apart from email, everywhere you have to use offset data. Hmm. And then this is the filter criteria where I'm going to go and search for that particular field. Okay. If you don't find this value, let's say this is Sussy. My email address is just the example here is. So if this is b2.sussy and email dot com then it will go and search for this data extension whether we have this email address or not okay if it finds it is going to update if it doesn't find it will create a new record okay this is the search criteria hmm. now anything that you want to add it to the data extension it has to be in the key value pair so full name full name address address right address to, to address to city city zip email consent here I have modified this one. So this value has to come from here. So this email consent. Okay. So similar, if I have to add another attribute, is simple like SMS and WhatsApp. Copy this. If you follow the proper nomenclature, you'll always be in a safer position. Okay. So for me, the now this is SMS consent. So I'll say this is SMS and I'll make this as SMS. This one has to be defined based on how you, the data extension attribute has been defined here. Okay, it has to match. Hmm. This is the attribute name, and for the attribute name, I'll always prefer proper naming convention. So this SMS and this is WhatsApp. And when the form is submitted, you'll see this. This done. Okay, so you have added everything. Okay, you submit like i've shown an example like i've added all these fields here okay i click on submit then i'll also how you can display this message saying that submitted successfully and in the submission you can send an uh, welcome email to that person okay how to send an email email to that person might be either you run it through a journey or automation or a trigger send will come to that Everybody clear till this point? Yes, you have to speak, otherwise I'll feel like I, uh, I'm I, the only one. I am. I followed this. Like yes, there is no uh, questions on this, Sashi. But like, uh, like if 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 like using the same email, if I don't mm. want that subscriber to resubmit the form, mm. uh, like to put the updated value, we we can achieve that as well, right? Mm. So, see, instead of you using offset, right? If you say mm. insert, then it is going only going to insert. Uh, mm. Old, uh, they you are uh, not allowing the person to uh, update. update. But uh, I would basically not advise that. Okay. Now, see, uh, say uh, who asked this question was just a good question. Uh, Jai so, Jayshree, Sri, okay. Uh, Say you have I send you an email, okay. Mm. Now, once I send this, just a minute, minute browser. Huh. Once I send the email, okay, uh, I have the tendency to click that link multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, what see first, I come here in the page for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this page will basically not look like this, okay, because mm -hmm. I'm simply hosting it from my correct, correct. Uh, desktop, right? Mm -hmm. Now is it will basically look like this mm. Mm. once i fill the form and i submit right it got mm. captured in my data extension mm -hmm. okay now what might happen is if i am clicking on the same link and again the this page will be blank right mm -hmm. so what you can add here see if i have to follow that here i could have done uh, i got the mid i got the email address mm -hmm. right 
here instead of capturing also i can have another block with the lookup and from the lookup i'm going to fetch the records from the data extension and i'm going to assign this similar to this instead of a request parameter mm -hmm. okay here i can modify this hmm. i got the request parameter with the email address mm -hmm. okay in the link either you have mm -hmm. subscriber key or email address right mm -hmm. and then from here i can have a say say and i say at the rate say say subscriber details okay and then i do i do a lookup rows i do a lookup rows and i'll basically go and search for that record and if i find this record already present in my master d this is my master d if i have already let's say this is the one i'm looking for the for the email using this field okay yeah you can go to the second session where we have used lookup rows and everything okay here and from this once if this record is available what i can do is i can assign these fields from this lookup data extension mm -hmm. okay if not if not then it's okay now if i'll say uh, i'll again have a if condition if that uh, lookup is there okay and then assign oh this is html mm. if and if mm. here then i can assign those fields here inside here okay so what happens is i'm even improving this mm. and second time if the user comes here if the user uh, lands here then this all fields will be pre-populated from the data extensions mm -hmm. mm. and either you when you pre-populate that's why I was adding this. Now you hit the right chord. Okay. That's why what I said was I was having this uh, field as disabled. You see, second time if the person comes, I'm not allowing the person to modify the email address. It's the primary okay. key. Okay. Okay. Right. So when you ask questions, I'll explain why I'm doing this. Hmm. But I don't want to confuse everyone because uh, it will be a lot of input for everyone. This way, what you will do is. Uh, currently, what I said was, don't. Uh, I'm not uh, suggesting anyone to have this if else lookup and everything. Uh, so make it. I'm trying to go slow. Okay. So every time the subscribers will hit the uh, link, he will come to this page and everything will be blank. But the best practice would always be to have a lookup and pre-filled if that is already present. And I either I can give a user the flexibility to update the email address. Mm -hmm. And also, like, the, mm -hmm. if if like the data extension get updated with new in information, we are not mm -hmm. allowing e them to change the email address because you have dis disabled it. But if like they if they change something else and it gets updated in the master or uh, de, mm -hmm. then like uh, is it like through synchronous data extension that it will also get updated in the CRM no. or uh, no. CRM? No, no. See, this I'm building through Marketing Cloud, uh -huh. right? So I'm simply you. You're adding more layers to it. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I'm making it simple because see, not everybody will have, uh, absorb in a one go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What what can what you are asking is a very big questions which can be answered. Okay. Now I uh, once this is submitted, I have submitted. I can also have your your if mm -hmm. i have to go this i can have another function okay i have submitted this is done what i i can also do is i can use uh, create salesforce object salesforce from here object, itself and then yeah and from there itself i can submit it to the sales cloud also or the crm system oh, hmm. i have wow. all the values here okay so see you are asking a question but uh, I, why am i don't answer all this in a go is see Everybody has to actually not only understand, they have to implement. If you don't yes, implement, yes. what is my effort? Uh, yes, I, I can time, completely understand. Time. Yes, yes. Even even I will not be able to absorb that fast. So I but it mm. it is like something that I have to implement in this like um, uh, one or two sprints. So I asked, but like we can take it slow. Uh, I didn't. My, yeah. I didn't know that we, we can do it through the code or, or we can update or create an object from marketing car cloud to sales um, like sales cloud i didn't i was not aware of it so thank you, you for you can do a lot of things okay you can do a lot of things see restrict yourself in your learning go slow okay. take one at a time i know 
uh, see, first a lot of people will hesitate creating this HTML. Then it will take some time even to create this form for a lot of people. That's why I gave this code for people to just uh, try out, right? Make it very simple and try out, mm -hmm. right? Now, again going back. Once everything is done, okay, the main crux of this solution will be you are inputting the values, submitting submitting the button, going to a data extension, and checking whether it is getting inserted or not. That will be the first point of contention of this session. Once you are going to achieve this, okay, in the next session, what we are going to do is now you have captured it, right? And somebody clicks on unsubscribe, okay. I'll, if I get some time nowadays, uh, now see uh, with this solution, what I, this one is done today. Okay, I'm capturing the consent and adding to the data extension. Okay, I have not shown how it will be added to the all subscriber. I'll explain that as well. By definition, once you have this in the data extension, you have this stored in the data extension, everything is stored. And when you send an email communication, uh, by marketing cloud definition, it automatically gets added to the all subscriber. If the email has uh, the subscriber has given the consent and you're sending it, sending it to the user, it will automatically get added. The best practice I'll explain in another sessions. In the next session, what I'll explain is how you are going to unsubscribe, how your how your cloud page has to be designed. Okay, uh, what M script block you have to write to unsubscribe from all subscriber, how you are going to update your in this data extension, how I'm going to set the uh, unsubscribe into all subscriber and here this email consent and other consents, how I'm marking it to false. Similar to similar to upset will be there. Okay, I'm keeping this here and you'll understand why I'm updating this so that uh, you'll understand like how you can use this field uh, using in an attribute group and you can use it in the journey and how you will set it to the exit criteria. Somebody may marking this false. And if somebody is in the journey, okay, all those journey will exit that person from the journeys automatically. This modeling of the data extension is very important. And then the final one would be the preference, which will be the full game changer. For me, this will be a full game changer. How it will be designed, I'll just okay, see you. They, I saw this one is a very beautiful one, preference center. Okay, uh, they have a video and everything I can see here. Okay, this is very good one. I was looking through one of the where they have the inbuilt one. Uh, very good example was there. Preferences. So you see, yes, I would like to receive. Okay, and they have a lot of preferences. Ah, 360 highlights. This is for marketing cloud. But based on your company requirement, if it's a restaurant, okay. You can have a uh, restaurant. Uh, if it is a hospital, I'll say if this is a department, okay, I'll create a cloud page similar to the specialties of the doctor. And I, instead of sales, service, marketing, cloud, and all this, I would have read uh, these check boxes with respect to oncologist, diabetologist, diabetologist gynecologist, uh, what, what other doctors, cardiologist, right? So that way I'll prefer you. Yeah. Huh. But this will, it will also have subscriber details like uh, first name, last name, and all those things also will be there. And this will basically change the full structure. I don't want to go into that detail because I want to hold on with my thoughts. I don't want to puzzle you everyone. Huh. So first, rather going haphazard everywhere, 